All right, so this is a discussion on the gas laws, um, sort of post-lab report. Obviously, you're gonna read the experiment, you're gonna collect all of your data. When you do this, you're gonna do a couple of things with a quick note on balloons and marshmallows. Um, with a balloon, the key on the balloon is that the balloons maintain the same pressure as their surroundings and a marshmallow the same way. Best way to consider a marshmallow here is to imagine it's a little tiny thing with balloons on the inside, such that if the outside pressure is one ATM and you've got little air bubbles in here, the inside pressure is one ATM also. Also with when you get to this and you um, take a look at your aluminum can, the purpose of the aluminum can, when we do this experiment here, you're gonna take and you're gonna put a can, you're gonna put it on a hot plate, you're gonna put a little bit of water in the can and the when you do this, the water is going to boil. It's gonna take this aluminum can and fill it through full of water as a gas. And water as a gas is gonna come out the top as well. You're gonna then take and take a big beaker. You're gonna have ice cubes in your big, be big, beeper, big beaker and you're going to invert the can into the ice water with a note. The entire purpose of the can, the water, the boiling, filling it with water is to, in a sense, empty the can. What we want and when we take and invert this can into the ice water is all we have in here is water as a gas. When water as a gas gets cold, it is going to go to water as a liquid. And what you're gonna make is a little tiny bit of water as a liquid and the rest of this can is empty. So all we're doing is emptying the can. And when you take this can and you invert it into this ice water, what you're doing is you are comparing the pressure inside the can, which is going to be close to zero because your can is empty, to the pressure outside the can, which is going to be one ATM. And with a note, please note that do not ever say in any science class that a vacuum has pulled on something. Realize that nothing, vacuums do nothing. All a vacuum is, is an absence of pressure. So when you explain this and you give me an answer on this, make sure you do it in terms of pushing. We're going to push from high pressure to low pressure. Wherever is higher pressure pushes, pushes to lower pressure. Lower pressure does not suck things in, higher pressure pushes. All right, with that in mind, we're going to take, and the last thing you're going to do is you're going to measure volume and pressure. When you do this, you're going to make two graphs of this data. So with a quick note here on your experiment, I want you to just write what happened. I do not care if you take and you fill this out and fill this out because it frequently doesn't make any sense. I think with the balloon and the hot water, you can probably do this. But when you're doing the marshmallow in the can, it isn't really going to make that much sense. So I want you to describe what happened and then why did it happen. So here, this is what happened. And this is why did it happen. And again, if you tell me that the low pressure sucked something in or something got sucked in or vacuums did something, you will get a very, very low grade because again, a vacuum is an absence of something. Absences can't do anything. All right, you're gonna take and you're gonna have volume and your pressure data. You're gonna record the temperature and so you have all of that information and then we're going to graph it. You are going to take and you are going to graph um, your volume and your pressure and then you're gonna take and you are going to re-graph it such that you graph it one over volume and pressure, you will have two graphs. Where if you graph one over volume versus pressure here, this one should give you a nice linear graph. Again, that's one over volume and make sure when you graph it that it fits your graph. Your graph shouldn't look like this. It should fit the entire page. All right, with this in mind, let's take and do a little bit of math. So assuming that the temperature of the gas that we had was at say 22 degrees Celsius, and that your pressure that you measured was say 0.995 ATM at a volume of 10 milliliters, we wanna know how many moles of gas are in the syringe. 
Well, we know that PV equals NRT, where the value of R that we have is 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin, telling us what our units need to be in. We know that our temperature, this is mole Kelvins. We know our temperature has to be in Kelvin, so we're going to add 273 to it. If you have more digits past the decimal than 22, you can include that 0.15, and I would get 295 in this case, Kelvins. If I rearrange and solve for N, my N here is going to equal PV over RT. I'm going to plug this in, sorting out my units. If I have 10 milliliters, remember that there's one liter for every 1,000 mils. And that's going to give us 0 0.010 liters. And if I plug this in and I measure the moles of the gas, this is just in my sample, that's going to be P 0.995 atm times the volume 0 0.0100 liters divided by R 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Atmospheres cancel, liters cancel. Multiply by the temperature in Kelvin, which you're going to get off of your lab quest, and your Kelvins are going to cancel. The moles are going to pop up in the numerator, and this is going to give you the number of moles of gas in your sample. Again, obviously, use your data. And when I do the math on this one, I get a value of 0 0.000411 moles. And I've got three sig figs on that one. So this is how you're going to fill this out. Remember, I don't need which gas laws change. That's actually quite hard to determine in this experiment. Make sure you've got two graphs, one of them that is volume and pressure. And the second one is pressure and one over the volume. And again, this one here should give you a nice straight line for your relationship for Boyle's Law, which is what we're doing. And the rest of this is math, which will make good sense when you are done with this chapter.